Hey guys, Death Clock Dave. Hey guys, Death Clock Dave here, and welcome to our first uh, battle report recap. Uh, tonight we had Corey Doyle playing Mercenaries, Ashlyn Delise, and uh, Jordan Reed was playing Grimkin, uh, the Heretic. We we're playing Scenario Five Outlast, and Corey won first turn with his Mercenaries. Uh, he had uh, Anastasia in there to add the uh, plus, so he often gets to go first with this list. So I stopped. Um, I stopped rolling because <laughs> I just I just don't win. So I just so, I just set, set it up on whatever side he doesn't. <laughs> Whatever side I want, basically. I appreciate it. So, out loud, uh, got so, two. so I choose to go first with the dice roll. Um, opt to set up very balanced, hoping that the extra nomad on the bottom side of the board offset the fact that I had cav on the other side. Um, the trenches, of course, are my list being advanced deploy. And all being ladies is nice because then I get the benefit of Pathfinder to pretty much everything in my army with her chosen ground up. Mm. Um, so, again, my option is I put... Ashton, with the intent of if it needed to, she could get to the flag, but she'd be able to advance, repo, and sit within the cover, which is the round ring that uh, I get to set Terrace and give up in to start the game, or any solo I choose. Uh, seeing how you deployed, I um, playing Bump of the Night, I spread out very widely because I wanted to try and make good effect of my Murder Crow. So, as you'll see at the top of the screen, uh, my Hollow Men are way up there because I'm trying to draw those. Um, Trying to draw those cab up towards me. Uh, Corey doesn't take the bait, but you'll see in you'll see in the next uh, bit here what I do to try and fight that. Um, so as I'm deploying, I uh, have a pretty standard deployment. I have my melee units central with the uh, range units on the outside just to come in from the side and pincer, flank, shoot what they can. Um, I chose this side because of the wall, and I wanted to be able to have a wall to walk up to. And then when I felt safe enough walk up to that building as well and be behind the building on the flag and hopefully protected from most of the things. Um, my AD was set up in a way I wanted to put those the first unit to the madcaps. So I, I of course set my AD up just standard with the intent of yeah. being able to fold to either side that I chose to which is probably a mistake I think I actually should have set up more to one side um, and been less evenly balanced and hope that just the cab survive on the top side. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, going back to, got ahead of myself there, um, going back to seeing how he deployed, I just wanted one of those uh, madcaps to sit in the zone, uh, or sit, sit in the flag in the zone, hopefully stay protected, and the second one was going to try and go in, as it did, go up and hug that wall, and just cry and keep pooping out uh, cask imps until he died, which he eventually did die in a glorious ball of fire. That's, that's because they're an atrocious model that I hate. Because when they move 12 inches and explode on my stuff, it's painful. It's true. It's true. This is the first time in a while I've gotten any good ones, actually. <laughs> Most times they're like, eh, you can roll double 12 and... We you played that cray list and you killed you killed a squire. squire and almost two juniors I think or something. Yeah, like, it was ridiculous. That was lucky though. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> that lucky. was me not understanding how madcaps work when you kill them. So yeah, they're a funny model. They're a funny model. So guys, make sure you read the madcap card before you kill the madcap. It is, by the way, amazing. We actually learned some cool stuff. Jordan pointed out to me after this game, which is amazing. We'll bring up during this this talk, which leads to more mistakes I made, which is good information to make me better later. So on the board we have a, a rubble on the bottom side of the bottom zone, and then water to the left of it, to the right is a, a forest, then the house in the middle, a wall to the right of the house, left of the top circle is a, a, another forest, to the right of the top circle is another forest, and the top of the top circle is a hill. And of course the AO AOE ring is the rubble that's set by the Laelis theme. I also, I also have, yeah, correct, a ring for ladies, and I also have Anastasia Debray in ambush at this point, who I'm actually holding with the intent of being able to kill a Holloman leader because that's just glorious. My, my UA because you go for it every time and so, I, try to, I try and stop it but 
It, it never stops. Oh, well, you just roll bad. They said that's all I got to gain, like bank on. It's just not rolling good. So I, I started the game by moving Ashen up. I put Quicken on the trenchers to get him up as far as I can, and I put Chosen Ground up so that I can't be knocked over. And Quicken is plus two defense and against ranged magic and plus two speed. Correct. So I, I advanced forward with Quicken, staying just aside the threat of exploding two things that roll max dice and kill me because I don't like those. The mad cap. Uh, I do a cautious advance also to gain cover because the Hollow Men have Isle of Sight. But uh, they do not ignore the cover. And cover will also save me when the dudes come up and throw bombs at me. True. And light me on fire. They do light things on fire. Yeah, at that point I just... We just need good deviations. That's all we need. And your battle group spell was no knockdown for the battle group. No knockdown and pathfinder for the battle group. Which gives the entire army pathfinder, which is actually an enjoyable thing. Coming from a faction that doesn't have a ton of pathfinder. Um, So I, I then next... Dirtle for a few minutes trying to figure out what to do because, you know, I like to hold my arms on a table like a monkey. Um, I, I attempt to make sure I have enough space to get models through because I know that my next turn is going to be tough to get all my models up. So I'm just trying to make sure I've got space to walk. I want to feet and then move up with Ashton so I don't want to jam myself too hard. It's a lot of models that are in my way. So this is where uh, Jordan's kind of have to remind me he has models in ambush and he actually picks his prey. <laughs> so rather than putting my lances on the side of the board where he can pray kill me, I decide to move my storm lances to where he can't charge with his murder crows and get a free unit of 20 point uh, storm lances. I probably could have, had I remembered pray earlier and had we uh, had I deployed earlier, I probably would have pulled the trenches down further and then just used the storm lances with a couple nomads on that side. Uh, running the thorn gun mages, thorn gun mages up behind because thorn gun mages are unbelievably awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I then just sort of clump all my solos up near Ashland because I have no idea what to do with them. Being the first time I've played this list, and a lot of the solos are not ones I'm used to using. So, first off, being my turn, you remember the things that you should always remember. You operate all of your Holloman forwards. it has been many games before <laughs> this one where I have forgotten my Holloman. Um, so we start thinking about... Here I'm just describing my Arcana. So for this game, uh, the Arcana I have was my Trump Arcana of Reckoning. Um, I chose Shroud because he had a decent amount of guns, and I chose Ruin because I was intending to stop one of those... Um, what's that spell you have that stops Bull shooting? Shaker. Uh, that, oh, um, yeah, Distraction. Was, distraction. Oh, yeah. I was under the, hoping the Distraction would not be a big thing. So. Just moving up these um, cast gimps just because they need to get out of the way and activating cast gimps with your dudes beside them is just asking for trouble. <laughs> so we just move them up to get them out of the way. Um, they are also just roadblocks. It's two points for four guys. You have to put attacks into them because you can't risk them actually getting into you. So um, this first, uh, this first unit of Madcaps walks up, and I take some scatters, and I actually get, um, I believe I get, I get one of your trenchers, I think it is, and I light him on fire. I get so. light the trencher fire because I'm immune to blast. Yes. So, he's on fire, hooray, so let the burning begin. You might have got two. And they're immune to blast because well, they're yeah, dead just a yeah. cautious advance. So. Yeah. So, next one shoots, and I believe I proceed to not roll anything. I believe I should scatter I and kill my cast yeah. casket. Which, Which is good because you need the model. It's true because turns out when you start with four cask imps and two madcaps, you can make ten cask <laughs> imps, and when you don't have enough, you don't get to play them. So, um, so the next one, same thing, walks up, makes some dudes, just toes the zone. Toes the zone, just because his plan is to sit there for the rest of the game and just make dudes and did eventually I, die in a ball of fire. Did and, I tell you I hate cask imps? Why? <laughs> because they're awesome and they look. Awesome, and because those things <laughs> kill me so much, I don't think I've ever actually made it to no once. I've made it once there, and it killed one guy, and it was it was glorious. It was glorious. It pained me. I'm terrified of it. But you know what? It makes it's attacks you have to make, so that is fine by me. Um, and for the standard turn one, everything just runs. Uh, just getting up as far as forward. Hoping, depending on what he does, I can um, possibly pop my Shroud Arcana, giving him no shots, which um, is a very... It's it's a decent thing. It either makes him have to come into me, or he has to back off for a turn. And Shroud gives stealth to your entire army. Yes, so the wording on it is, if you um, shoot anything in my command range, which the Heretic is 10, I can you choose to activate it. I just grabbed a card here, by the way. You handed me your card. I asked for the... 
the casket card. The reason I asked for the card was because I was reading Bone Shaker, and I realized you're an RFP, and I wanted to see when <laughs> your uh, Madcap, Madcap Madcap actually Madcap. just blew up, and he blows up on um, on Destroyed. Yeah. And RFP from Bone Shaker is actually on Boxed. So if I can RFP him with Bone Shaker, I can actually remove him from the game and not die to the <laughs> horrific blast of fire so, death. So it's at some point in this turn, Corey hasn't realized it, but I've realized I have screwed up horrendously. Um, I don't know if it was before I placed I placed a firewall, which I thought was actually a very decently placed firewall. Um, uh, or no, this turn. No, I didn't place it. Yeah, you placed it this turn. Oh, wait, we were looking. Right, we yeah. were looking for the template. Um, but an interaction that uh, most people don't know, and if anyone wants ever thinks about it, it's, it's scary, is my cask imps blow up whenever they advance. And the wording on Bone Shaker is you take control of the model and make an advance. So I was sitting there ready to throw down my Ruin Arcana because I was scared shitless that he was going to walk the dude, the cask imp, at the top of the bottom zone into that little cluster of everything there <laughs> and kill everything there. Oh my god, that would have been, been so amazing. That would have been great. That's good like, I don't think you could have got, you probably could have gotten like like what? I think I can get in here and, and get. Uh, you could you could have gotten my probably get, madcap as well. I, was say, I probably, I probably could have actually got. You don't have Pathfinder, so mm -hmm. I probably got, could have got around behind the uh, the the pumpkin head below the flag. Yeah. And actually take five, maybe six pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> and lit them all on fire. Um, this is also the turn where things mistakes were made. I'll so let this you go. this turn goes horrible for me. I actually forget to power up and up upkeep spells. So I opted because that's the person I am, to punish myself by not allowing Jordan to allow me to fix it. So then I begin my activation. I go on tilt, because like that's what great players do, right? We go on tilt. Um, and instead, I opt to uh, try to cast Distraction. Now, in my my frustration, I start measuring proxies to get placed where I'm going to go. I should have actually walked away for two minutes, took a few breaths to recoup myself, came back and played the game out. I, uh, I then forget to... Um, Move Silas and activate Silas for Arcane Secrets first. And I'm going to end up two inches short for distraction, which means the Holloman unit on the bottom of the board get their full activation, which is amazingly bad for me, especially when Ashen walks up. So then I also panic feet, which I wasn't totally thinking of doing. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's probably where my turn really starts to go south. Uh, I, I move, as you'll see here in a second, this is where we, re we realize I made a huge mistake. Um... Now that I've, again, now that I've already placed everything, I just activate and do, right? This is where Jordan, of course, points out I'm out of range. I thought it was... Eh, it's a mistake. They happen. Um, so I feet again to recover. Um, managed, I managed distraction the Pumpkinhead dudes. Dreadrots. The Dreadrots. And I, and I managed to throw a Gallows onto his... The Madcap. Madcap. So this, is where, this is where Madcaps are amazing. Um, because this is one of the better deviations I've had with them. So how the wording works in them is when they're destroyed, you roll a 2d6 and add 3, and then you choose a point that distance away. It has to be that that distance away, and um, you roll a deviation going towards your board side. Uh, then a 4-inch AOE does a POW 12 and everything, it's, and it's glorious and everything burns. So and... I lose Eilish, I take 4 wounds on Silas, mm -hmm. um, and I lost 2 trenchers. Does it set them on fire as well? Yeah, and then fire. they all stay on fire. So Silas ends up dying the next turn because of fire. Yep. And then you just take some hand cannon. Um, so instead, I gallows, I hand cannon, and instead of being brave and repoint forward, which I think was the play to put myself more aggressively with my feet, I actually back up. And the repo is from... Well, the repo um, is from... Um, from the Gibbs. Gibbs. Yeah. So then the Thorn Gun may just move up to hopefully again trigger an Arcana. Taking some pot shots at the dreadlocks. So I, I removed two of the uh, two of the walking shooting things, no, and then at the, as I remove the second one, this is where he uh, decides to drop his shroud arcana. Mm -hmm. so the entire army gets stealth. Yep. Which effectively shuts down any remaining shooting. Uh, so instead of shooting, I opt to jam the trenchers in. Uh, I, I attempted to stay every, all the trenchers within ten of my caster, meaning that the front of the base or under ten for my caster. More than closer than ten to my caster, meaning that if the one inch reach engages me, I'll still get my feet. So I pop many feet on the trenchers, which drops a wall of clouds, which is annoying. And then they get to That's try to assault in. Yeah, I'm the worst. Yeah, well we. 
Cloud walls are a thing. At this point, the cloud wall is just to... You, you might as well use it. It's because I'm as well many feet. Yeah. So my treasure charge in. I think I killed... A few dread rods. Well, I killed everything I charged because you didn't make a tough roll. I, I, I actually sh I shot and killed everything I charged because you didn't make a tough roll. Yep. I think I made one melee attack. As, as, as you'll notice in the game, the theme for my dice is... And eventually I changed it to a, one of my dice that actually worked. But I think out of every tough roll I could have made here in this game, I made four or five, which doesn't... It seems a little below, below average, but it was on turns that... Having it was on turns where it, it mattered to make at least a couple of them. Yeah, you didn't make it a tough roll this entire turn. No. Nope. <laughs> Which is the turn I get the bulk of my work done. Yes. So of course the trenchers assaulted in, got the assault shots, and then cleaned up with yep. whatever they had left. Yep. So uh, I think I only made one melee attack. Uh, Ashlyn's feet, by the way, is absolutely amazing. Yes, it is good. Ashlyn's um, feet, of course, is uh, add two dice to every roll, both yours and the enemy's, and Corey gets to choose which dice the, are dropped. The, the Ashlyn player chooses. So I actually managed to hit with absolutely every single roll. Which, when you're assaulting with trenchers at rat six, six and seven because of uh, veteran leadership, you're not going to hit a lot of stuff, and I end up hitting everything. It was actually this turn I was sus suspecting you to actually take the firewall because I thought you could get so much work done with those caps. I 100 percent should have, and I realized that that was a huge mistake. But I, again, I, I threw myself on tilt and just opted to play a slow game. Yeah, I was. I knew I was going to take a brunt, so I was trying to soften it up. So I wasn't expecting you to actually. But at this point, my plan on that the top zone is just to, to give you a couple storm lines as a turn to make it hard to win, and then put a nomad to win so you don't score. And at this point, I'm still hoping to score and take the bottom zone and my flag. Yep. Because I think I have enough meat still on the bottom with Ashland, who's a beast, to be able to control and, and clear out that center. And I hadn't lost a thorn gun mage yet, so which are absolutely amazing models. And this is actually where I cheated. Because I measured seven, and they're actually command six. So my oh. Thor Gummage that is behind uh, the smoke cloud in the, the five-inch exactly. ring exactly. is actually out of command. Okay. So I am a dirty cheater. The internet can know that now. Yeah. We all are, sir. We all are. Uh, I, didn't realize, I didn't realize until the next turn, though, little that they were six. Little did you know I was using magnets under the board to move stuff. Oh, dang it. <laughs> no one, just no one can see it. Uh, this is where... What, is, what am I rolling here? I'm pretty sure I... I you I, killed the second... I killed the second uh, madcap with my storm lines. And I believe I hard rolled the nine to kill one straight up. <laughs> <laughs> and set a couple more on fire. Yeah, so, so I, have, I have two storm lances with two damage on them, one storm lance dead. You, you, the key models for me weren't the lances, though. It's the, the three nomads and the six gun mages. Yeah. They did, they did great work for you. They, this game. They're probably the most the most work I'm going to get from this list is out of them. So this, this turn... Um, I was trying to with that nomad up in the zone. I can't. I didn't think I could really. I didn't. I didn't quite have the range, and I had no way to extend it. Uh, I wasn't willing to put uh, heretic close enough to try and pull it forward. Um, so I didn't think I could get that zone. Um, so I started opting to try and clear out my flag to start scoring a point. Um, and as you'll see, you have. Gorman up there. So in this turn, I also forget to put my own model within four. So in, in George's defense, I was on tilt and probably not the best opponent at this point because I really should have walked away from the table, um, and I didn't. So again, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, it is okay. Tilt, tilt happen and tilt happen. I also to tough like a champ because I want to say I think I tough like three times you, on the important models. You, you tough on the model. So there's you'll see there's four trench or three trenchers. Um, around that flag right now. They're all within four, and I need to kill all three, and I think you make at least two or three of the tough rolls I need, and I just ran up running out of attacks to to do it. Um, you also miss with all of your dread rocks. Nope. I killed with one, which is all oh. I wanted, because I just needed the one corpse <laughs> on right. my cage rager. And that was the whole goal of that combat. So uh, the glimmer move was great. I really liked the glimmer on the flag, because like, reducing my defense to 11 made it possible to hit me. Yep. Um, but the again, Ash's feet is just so ball-busting. Yep. So at this point, uh, we were discussing I can't actually not be out of the feet, so I just go, you know what, we'll put everything in, we'll try and get at least one, and if we can get one, then... The cage ridger go, goes online and it makes life a little bit easier for. You mean the cage ridger gets bonuses when he has corpses? No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that comes into effect later in the game when Corey doesn't realize he's an arc node. Hint, hint, hint. So, yeah, as we're going here, we make some attacks. I kill one, which is great. Uh, he can't make a tough roll because the, uh, the dread rots just shove you in a bag and say, "Nope, you just die in my bag, sir. You just die in my bag." 
The Glimmer Imp on the flag is nice because it's got stealth and uh, natively high defense, so it's a hard model to remove. Yep. So we kill. We're just chipping away at those. Um, we're just chipping away at those uh, trenchers. Uh, I move up my um, uh, Frightmare at this point, and I target his leader in the back, hoping to knock both of those off. And I think I kill the leader. Do I? I tough. I you, think I tough. No, you didn't even make a. I don't think you forced a tough roll because they didn't put an Octon token on him. I think you actually failed to break armor. Oh, yeah. I'm yes, I'm pretty right. sure you tied armor. Right. Um, so those. Yeah, so uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can't see it now, but my actual, um, my uh, murder crows came in from the bottom, and we're just looking to jam up the, that um, one heavy and take down a thorn, 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 what are they called? Thorn gun mages. Thorn gun mages. So, it, and it turns out Matt 8, Matt it, 10, Matt, Matt 10 kills thorn gun mages pretty easy. <laughs> Matt 6 in the rear with gang. Yes. Ends up being amazing. And they're def 14, right? Yeah, so yeah. I just basically need to not... Def not enough, Dave. Just yeah. Def 14 yeah. is not enough yeah. against no. charging rear gang models. <laughs> uh, I think you only did six points to the Nomad, though. Yeah, you still have the I, Nomad in pretty good shape. I spiked one roll and then flubbed all the rest of the rolls, which would, ended up being pretty pretty average. Pretty average. Uh, I think you should have done two or three more. You did a good spike on the first one, but really, at the end of it, you probably should have done two or three more. So they're measuring to see if I can get anything onto that other um, Nomad up there, but I can't, so I just... Opt to start trying to clear out what I can, get everything I can here. Kill my amazing trenchers? Uh, more, more. At this point, I think since I couldn't get it, I was going to try and kill some of those, um, some more of those storm, uh, storm lances. Just because I know how much work they can get with their, with their impact attacks, their assaults, their charge with elite. They can kill four model. If not, if you don't defend against it, they can kill four models a turn, which is not... Not okay. Um, no, that's after the nerf. <laughs> yes. They can still do a lot of work. Um, so this is my cage. Three. Oh, in, impact can get you in, four or five. Impact, You're right. assault, in, impact assault, charge, elite. 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 Yep. So you can get four pretty, pretty, as long as it, as long as you don't set up where it's... I'd already wasted Ashen's feet, and they don't have veteran leaders, so they're garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Star Blasters are only good when you get extra dice. Yeah. Mad 7 isn't great. Well, when you get three dice to charge, well, I actually think that my, you you played well into my storm monsters because you didn't give me a lot. The firewall was uh, was enough of a deterrent a lot of the times. Um, firewall played a big role in this game. Uh, I think I put a second one down just to keep keep deterring um, you from doing it. So here I have the Holloman walking up because I'm just trying to get as much as like work as I can get out of them, even under feet, just to hit those models that are within four. I just want to get rid of those trenchers. So. I think I miss one of the attacks I need to kill them, and just, yeah, run out of what I need to kill that. Uh... I think you snake eyes on the knockdown guy. Yes, I think I snake And then you kill the sniper. I do kill the sniper. Looking back, what I should have done is I had, I was a bit too afraid of dying, so all I did on this turn was put up a firewall, but I should have just cast some sort of spell at that knockdown dude, because I think scoring a point this turn was um, too important not not to do. The other thing I forgot to do in this was uh, put anything within contesting of Corey's leg, so he scored a point on his turn, um, which is never good when someone scores on your turn and you don't score on your turn. So It's not reflected in the points right now, but we correct that. Uh, yeah, I didn't notice. We actually didn't notice turn, until, so. uh, until during my next turn. Yeah. So this is uh, the rest of these Holloman on the top going after as many... I think this you just clear the rest of the trenchers on the top end. I clear the trenchers and I clear that. I think I I think I kill that other, or do I miss? No, nope, you missed the pony. I missed the pony. Oh, uh, yeah, we kill him. Yes, I did miss the pony. So, I think I needed. I think I rolled. Did I roll snake eyes on that one? Or yeah, you actually rolled just a hard snake. There, yeah, there's yeah. a two or three of those, I think. And this is just the dread rots going in just to just to jam up. Just being an action seat though, you miss it both. Yeah, yep. and they're just they're just there to be in the way just because. Oh, because yeah, storm, master storm monsters charging are, t are brutal. And I was hoping to make toughs, but toughs don't. This is a theme on a lot of games. I don't make a lot of tough rolls in general. Actually. Not in the important turns. You, you make know? tough rolls later, so you put your firewall down, which actually was, uh, again, a nuisance because it stopped two of my models from from moving because both those models are down wounds. I believe one of them had four and the other had two. So yeah. charging through the, the cloud, there's a good chance, or a firewall, there's a good chance they both die. Yeah, So and that was the goal. Was just to... So I think I go into the tank here for a bit. I think it was important for me because I think this is where I start to recover. Because, um, you know, I'm frustrated still at myself because I'm in a horrible spot. I roll my fires. I think it goes out on the one lance. 
Um, I lose one more model from fire, and then I lose the trencher, which we forgot about and came back to. I think we kill. Do we kill? No, we don't. We, we lost. Don't. I lost Silas. Yes, you did lose. Silas. I lose Silas, and then I, I come back and I lose the trencher by your fireball. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I remember I allocate this turn. I allocate zero. I just power up because I'm a champ. Um, I, I want to say my turn was really simple. All I thought was if I can just get work done on my zone. Ashlyn's pretty champ, so I can fire her in. Maybe clear out some of the hollow men. Um, all I need to do is make sure I protect her from the cage rager and whatever he can throw at me. Uh, because Death 17 isn't really the greatest. So I want to say all I, I think about it for a while, how to kill the two, how to clear off the, the four behind my my nomad. I come up with the idea that I'm just going to use an aiming Gibbs to shoot my own nomad using pow, high power blast, which just kills everything. Mm -hmm. um, I walk up the two gun mages to clear a little more for me. And then Ashen charges in, which I think was probably the one bright moment of my game. I probably, at this point, should have cast Solid Ground, though, to give myself the uh, the campy knockdown. Hmm. Yeah. And then, um, so I'm just waiting here, seeing if there's any Arcana I can, I can trigger here. I think, um, what do we got next here? We got Dead Space. This is what we got. We've got Dead Space. <laughs> a whole lot of me in the think tank, which is yes. the worst reason to watch like live games. So, um, so this will be just putting proxy down to see where I can get. I just I want to be able to make sure I get a model between um, his beast and me so he can't just walk over, gallows me into the beast, and kill me. I think that's my biggest fear at this point. Uh, so, then I realized I can charge the Glimmer up on the flag and clear a model out, and I realized I didn't allocate because, again, I'm a champ. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I'm just going to hard roll a nine, which doesn't happen. Cause I, I, think, I think also at this point, I, I looking at it now, you didn't have Pathfinder at that point, had you? Had you, had a, you had, didn't have I, I calculated it out. I took four off to get out of the bush, okay. and then I moved the rest. Okay. And then we get there. So you miss needing a nine. I miss needing a nine. And he so is now, there. Now I go to shoot Gibbs, and I realize before I roll the dice that uh, I need to move that gun major. He dies also. Yeah. <laughs> so I walk the gamage in behind the two murder crows to clear space, and I walk the other gamage up to uh, mm -hmm. to get into command, which I think I was in seven again and not in six, so I yeah. cheated a second time. Uh, this was a, a really great play by you because I never, I didn't think about high explosive on the attack, so they were there to tie up, and you handled them quite handedly. They uh, I had to roll hard six because the engage penalty. Uh, it's still, still needing it. You know, just auto kills all of them. So they did. They did nothing, basically, this game, as Murder Crows tend to You ended do. up being a 12, I had to go back and roll. Yes, And then I, I came up with, with, uh, with no damage. And yeah. the high explosive, of course, is that AoE, it's all POW-10 rather than being bla actual half blast damage. So. I want to say, I also put Distraction up on the um, Hollow Men this turn, so the Distraction were Hollow, the Hollow Men were distracted, and Anastasia Debray actually moved in on his uh, top flank, and she's going to attempt to kill... The, the UA for the top Holloman unit it's because I need to get some work done there. And what sucks with Holloman is when they kill cavalry and they come back as Holloman. That's on the top right hand side. So of this the is the top right hand side to the right of the clock. You'll sort of see a model up there. That is Anastasia to Broken, who hits and does one point of damage at dice off ten. So not the greatest, but enough to hopefully put some fear into him. I then move my nomad up. I think I killed a couple models trying to clear up that lance. Yep. Yeah. And then I move the Thorn Gun Mages up and clear the rest of the Storm Lance off. Yep. And try to position where I can charge some Lances. The Gun Mages got a lot of use out of Black Penny this game. Yes, they did. Oh, I don't think I declared a shot until I shot for the one there later that was actually not just Black it's, Penny. Turns out when you can charge and then think about where you're going to shoot next is yeah. quite wonderful. And then six shots on three guys. All at Rat 7. Mm -hmm. Rat 8, if they're within range of Ashland, is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. So I was thinking about a charge here, and I opted just to to walk up and shoot, and then get in my way because I just needed to clear models to not die. I, I'm killing off the pumpkin dudes, the dread, last dread rods, dread rods, because I want to make sure my nomad can't die to dread rod charges. And this is where I'm hoping to make at least two or three toughs. Because and... at this point, I realize I'm up one nothing. I'm going to be up two nothing at the, at the end of this turn, and I think I've got a pretty decent chance to clear the bottom zone. Yeah. Which would give me two more points on my next turn, and hopefully he gets one on his, so we end up going to like 4-1, and then I've got a chance to actually pull out a win. So I opt, because I'm just trying to clear Webmasters, to run two models, and I charge, hoping to kill a couple models with the uh, the one storm last second charge. Mm -hmm. And I actually tried at first to charge over the wall, but 
not being a dirty cheating bastard and instead I just charge hollow man. Yep, so you got a you got a couple you missed your impact attack. I missed the impact attack. I kill one and another with the E Leap. Um the other the other ponies just run again to engage. Yep. Just so I'll, hopefully again I protect my nomad for another turn. Those hollow men are just trying to tie up those hollow men, trying to get them base to base, because if you're not base to base they can they can apparate. And, and, out and, still shoot you. and Gorman is now still sitting on my flag. Yes. Because Gorman's a boss. Yeah, so just a couple of minutes this ago, is... we corrected the, the point uh, error in the. Yep, and this there. is where I think Gorman's amazing. So I walk Gorman to within. Um, he's still within seven of Higgs. So for repo, I Higgs. walk him three from the flag. Gibbs, thanks. And I throw a bomb, miss because of stealth. Scatters, does a POW 12 anyways, and manages to clip the glimmer and kill him. Yep. Which is important because minus two defense is amazing when you're trying to kill a Death 17 caster. At that point, is your nomad within four inches of the flag? My well? nomad is also contesting and okay. needs to be killed for the flag to be scored. Yep. So now we're just looking at uh, trying. To, I'm just trying to minimize the amount of dudes that can charge an ash. And at this point, I probably should just let him charge me. As long as he can't knock me over, I probably live through whatever. And with repost, I can probably just kill whatever comes in. So it probably mitigates what comes at me. And I did have enough focus on me at this point to actually cast solid ground. I'm just again not smart. And earlier, did she charge it and she did uh, flash? She charged it and she flashed and bladed yeah. uh, so once and then did her regular, or flash bladed twice and did a regular attack. Yeah. Okay. So it's back to me, and this is me operating, uh, trying to kind of, realizing I forgot to put something on his flag. He goes up to, um, and now I'm just trying to clear out as much as I possibly can. Uh, I have those hollow men try and get out of the way as best as possible just to avoid, avoid being in combat, but you can't really, so. Um, this is also a bit of a small error. I should have proxied this out. My Rattler walks up, and I was hoping to be able to Berserk into the second um, cab up there, but I just end up walking in the backyard, killing one, and trying to get out of the way best. This is where I punched Dave's camera? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that was great. Mm -hmm. it was... There'll be some correction jiggling here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, the... so I get two free strikes here to, to unengage my um, Storm Monsters, which I take and kill two Holloman. Yep. And Did then, you take your Electro Leaps as well? Is that only during... The... Uh, there was... What he gave me the... Well, it would have killed the second one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't have got the second free strike. So gotcha. this is me just putting one giant combined range to, again, just whittling down those um, those cab, trying to get them... Trying to get them... So I think you charged one with um, Dread Rots and killed the other with Holloman. Yes. So this is me... Um, this is me attempting to actually set up for an assassination, but realizing I kind of lose my way halfway through because I was hoping on math. I don't even know. On math, I think I kill four attacks. I should be doing 30 to that to that nomad, and I, I do come short. And It's goal... armor 19 to start, so you dice off two, so... and you're six attacks, so 30, but I lose a shield part way through, so 36 is more doable killing a nomad. Yeah, so the goal here was to do is I was trying to beat back my way, um, staying unengaged with everything else, and then I wanted to kill that nomad, then putting myself in range of the caster, and what I was going to try and do is uh, throw a gallows at her and pulling her into range for the two. I had my Frightmare down at the bottom and my Lord Longfellow ready to go, and after pulling her far enough forward, I was hoping to get a couple shots into her, but I fall short on the damage, and I end up having to use one of my shots. Or I end up deciding that I have to... I have to use my other shots to get rid of that Nomad because I need to clear space so those Dread Rots can go in and start killing some other stuff. So I... Yeah, your, your Frightmare shoots and kills my Nomad after yeah. Longfellow, I think, shoots... I and... clear up those Dread Rots. I do some Black Penny... Um, I do some Black Penny shots and uh, clear up a bit of space for those. Um, but, yeah, um, at this point, I'm just trying to set up because eventually if he doesn't run... I think Longfellow killed the last of my... Uh, Trenchers? My, no, uh, my Cav. Did he have the uh, no? The last one that killed I had a I had a oh, yeah. dread rots. I had one okay. dread rots run up and charge him in the back arc and put the last one down. So, um, so but, this is the shot from the framer that kills the nomad. Does the last two points? Yep, just barely. Um, so this is these Holloman which have been distracted, doing absolutely nothing at this point. All I'm trying to do is clear up those last two trenchers to I, get as many charges. I think from you those. walk. Yeah, you. That's right. Hall, Lord Longfellow killed the trencher. Yeah, and then you attempt to magic spell on the on the um, on the, the trencher to the trencher. turn him around so that I can get back strike. And then you on. make one of two potential attacks on Ashlyn Miss. I, I repost into you, and then I choose not to make the second attack because I did not realize she had repost on her. So I was like, no, don't need to, <laughs> don't let need to let you kill my stuff on on your activation. Um, this is where 
The uh, heretic is walking up, going to score a point. Um, I'm making sure I'm outside a range of your caster because I still feel like she's threatening. Um, she's mad eight. She's power eleven weapon master. Yep. I so, think I can repo Ragmat up to you. Yep. So I'd be power thirteen weapon master. I think if you're within thirteen, I can probably kill you. Yep. And so at this point, I I camp four because I'm a little bit afraid. Um, We're just looking to see if you can contest my flag also. Yes. Yeah, because so you hadn't at this point. No. So I'm trying to see if I can get through the building, but I can't quite get there. So I have to run one of my dread rods up just to contest, and the other few go into that um, nomad. Um, this is where I actually roll pretty lucky, I believe, and I take out the cortex on that. Yep. No, I don't know if it's lucky. He was already hurt to begin with. Um, this is also a uh, thing. That's also what Heretic, all he did is he walked up and he actually put Fury on that second unit of Dreadrots to put as much damage into that Nomad as possible. So um, this is them. Because you only need to do three points or four points to that five column to kill it. Yeah, and that, that punches out its uh, Cortex, leaving it a little bit less. Because you actually didn't roll well on your dice. I think it was dice off six and you did uh, on the two, two of your charge attacks, you only did four damage. Yeah, I think, damage. I think... I rolled, I rolled not the greatest on those, so um, I think at this point I passed the clock back, and... So at this point I realized my only real win condition is to clear the zone on the bottom. I can score another point with Gorman, which I'm going to do, which isn't an issue, but I'm only up 2-1. I'll go 3-1 on my turn at best, so like I need to get work in the, the zone. I opt to not Thunderbolt the Beast out of the zone, which I just should have done, because um, it just would have been a better play for me. Um, and instead, I use Shasta's clear models to try and create a landing zone to walk Ashen up and then Flashing Blade. I use Ragman with Dark Shroud and then just forget to put him in the right spot. Um, he doesn't make a huge... Because you don't go in on my Beast at this on this turn. So. No, and I, I, my intent was to to not go into the Beast. I don't know why I Dark Shroud. I think it's just habit and excitement because I never get to. Yeah, usually... I also forgot to repo him in a better spot because I can't. Um, I think Gorman walks up, throws a bomb, misses everything. Yeah. I'm just measuring to see if I can be safe from Longfellow, because Longfellow terrifies me. Longfellow and at this point, I'd actually forgotten Gallows. Yep. Yeah. We're both Gallows casters, so you got to be fearful of it. So, well, less so for Heretic, because it turns out being a god kind of yeah. <laughs> makes you immune to spells, apparently. Didn't know that's how that that's how. So I think I walk up, I cast Bullet, or... um. Quicken, because I thought defense would help me and not can't be knocked down, which was you know probably a good move. Um, I want to say I, this is I think the thorn gummy just walk up on the top. Nope, this is where I correctly place my uh, nomad in the greatest spot to be uh, slammed. Mm -hmm. uh, do absolutely nothing with the nomad. You killed a couple more. Nope. I proceeded to not make a couple more tough chucks. Yeah, that might that well, might have no cortex, right? So he's just yeah. swinging it. Yeah. yeah. Swinging for Arnold's. And this is where I think I'm just going to kill Longfellow because I'm just tired of that guy. So I'm proxying where to put, how to get one of my uh, my models there. The Nomad clear space, knocks down, and he actually toughs the bottom dread right, right below him. Hits and actually does some damage to the beast with his sword. And then I move up, and I, I think I just spike the nine? Yep. You spike the totally nine. Did. Yeah, this is where... I spike the nine with a PAL-14 and kill Lord Longfellow, which yes. was, uh, you know, there's the nine. Uh, probably the best move of this game. Because if you miss Longfellow, he shoots you back. Yeah. So. yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't need that gum age. I needed Longfellow dead. Yeah. The dice, just like, you got this dice. So, this is back to me, and I'm just going, well, your caster can be knocked down. I'm going to... Because I amazingly placed that model right in the right yeah. spot. So, so we're just looking at it going, you know what? That jack is uh, right there, and I'm just going to make it topple over your caster. So, um... At this point, also, I'm thinking his caster is still very well hidden from most things. Um, uh, I can get a shot from the gore ha or from the frightmare on the bottom there, but um, what I really need to go on here is I need uh, my trump arcana or not my trump, my gallows to pull you forward. Also, to be clear, um, when Ashen went in with her um, with her flashing blade, I popped my last arcana on her, uh, effectively giving prey to my entire. To my entire army, which I also forgot to apply to that that collateral damage on the. Uh, collateral's not from an attack. That's not from an attack, yeah. so that wouldn't be. So this is her knocked down. So I'm shooting with the frightmare and. I think I, take, I think I take six on the collateral, which is shake for one, and, and then, then I take thirteen on the shot, which is shake for uh, for seven. seven. I took twelve on the shot, I shook um, for seven. 
So this is where uh, Heretic goes next. He casts Gallows into your caster. He cranks the 15. Cranks 15. And leaves me on uh, leaves me on two boxes, charges, and auto kills yeah. me on the charge. Yeah, because I got I, I'm able to between the forest have a line of sight and I'm able to charge through and get it done. So. It turns out defense 19 does not matter when you're knocked down. Yep. So correct. 